Woohoo! Hey, thanks all for being here. A different type of episode today. But as usual, I, we try and weave in a story about how everything ties back to Bitcoin and crypto. And I know for some, it may not appear altogether a thousand percent relevant. But trust me, it is. If you're interested in Bitcoin and Bitcoin price, there's a message here. Even if you're not into sports. But anyway, let's jump in. Today's story is a story of crypto, crypto adoption, money, and conversion. And at the end, we'll dig into the impact of things like the Super Bowl on Bitcoin price. Let's go. So first of all, let's talk global adoption. Big thank you as well to the mods for being here and keeping us all safe. So global adoption, crypto index. This is a map of where the hotspots are around the world. Do you guys notice anything? Hotspots, Nigeria, Kenya, Ukraine, India, Venezuela, Vietnam, Argentina, Brazil, etc., etc. Even the US is kind of dark orange. The pattern behind all of this is either inflation or lack of trust in government or the willingness to be self-sovereign or all three. So you can see the adoption is big. Now, I did say in my 2022 predictions that I do believe we could hit a billion users by the year end 2022. We have about 300 million today. And why does that matter? Well, Bit Bitcoin and crypto users grew by 178% in 2021, and I think it's going to be even higher. It's going to be like more than 300% in 2022. And part of it is because of sports and adoption and marketing and bringing more people into the fold. We're lucky. We are early, but there's a more coming on board fast. And why do we care? We care because NGU... So adoption drives NGU technology. Here is a very simple chart from Glassnode over the last 13 years. You can see the orange line is the number of Bitcoin addresses and the white line above is the price action. The more addresses, the higher the price. The more adoption, the higher the price. That's why we care. And that's what this story is about, with a lot about sport too. So uh, let's talk about sports penetration real quick. And this is global. This is not just... UFC fighters or NFL football players. It's top soccer players in Europe and all sorts of stuff. But let's talk about some of the mainstream adoption and what's happening. So Tom Brady is doing a big FTX commercial. And Tom Brady is a guy who is widely considered the greatest American football player of all time. He is a goat. Uh, he has a whole bunch of records, um, seven Super Bowl rings. Uh, he even got to the I think the NFC Championship game last year, he's doing really well. But now he is pushing FTX and obviously an exchange that I like a lot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And he also, I think he gave somebody back some Bitcoin to get his football back for his 600th touchdown pass or something like that. So he's deep. He's deep in it and he has very, very big brand recognition. But there's a whole bunch more. Now, there's so many athletes here that it's just too many to talk about, but you got people like Clay Thompson, major basketball player, taking part of a salary in Bitcoin. Aaron Rodgers, salary in Bitcoin through Square Block, which had a big up 10%, 11% today as well. At last, nice to see that move after we touched on it the other day. Odell Beckham Jr., another guy with the Cash App, Square Block, etc. See how everything is connected. Andre Iguadalu, uh, also MVP, NBA guy, a lot of money in Bitcoin. And there's more. These guys, you probably recognize some of the names. Um, I think uh, Lionel Messi, the guy at the very front, top soccer player. Then you have uh, Russell Okung, the American football player. He receives half of his $13 million in Bitcoin with Strike. Again, not Square, but Strike. Sean Culkin, a uh, former college player, receives all of his salary in Bitcoin. Lionel Messi is a huge portion, more than half of his $33 million salary in crypto. Uh, Cade Cunningham, and on and on and on. You can see everybody wants to get paid in Bitcoin. It's not just mayors, it's top athletes too. And who follows these top athletes? Millions and millions of people. We'll dig more into that. This guy has 50 million people following him on Twitter, LeBron James, and he's a philanthropist, and he's an inner city kid, and he wants to help inner city school children. So he's super cool all around, and he believes between himself, NBA, Crypto.com, he can help educate more children in the inner cities. And he's working on a whole bunch of different partnerships to help blockchain. I think his quote is, where it's the effect of blockchain technology is revolutionary for our economy, our sports, our entertainment, 
the art world and how we engage with one another and for children. So really cool work by LeBron James. Also, they're also, all these athletes are working with NFTs too. You have uh, people like Patrick Mahomes, very popular American football player. He now has his own NFT line. Steph Curry, one of the most popular basketball players. He's got a huge FTX NFT um, collection and a shoe line. Rob Gronkowski, the Gronk, has his own NFT. NBA Top Shots, it goes on and on and on. As you can see, these are huge industries, massive adoption, all happening, literally all spun up over the last 12 months. Now we've got the UFC, heavyweight champion of the world, uh, uh, Francis Nagano. He's basically paid half of his purse in Bitcoin and he gave $300,000 in Bitcoin away. He's really driving massive adoption through a large part of the African continent as well. So let's talk about Pete McCormick from What Bitcoin Did podcast. Big fan of his, subscribe to him, watch him on Twitter, YouTube, etc. But he acquired a football team called Bedford Football Team, I think. <laughs> and uh, they are going to be powered by Bitcoin. He's working on his new kit layout now as well. So good on you, Pete. Well done, sir. Now... It's not just football or basketball, but also Terra Luna, one of our favorite names too. One of the largest decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, in the cryptocurrency industry has had a huge meteoric rise this year over the last 12 months or so. But they have partnered with the Nationals and they are a leading innovator in Major League bas Baseball. I nearly said basketball, baseball. And they are introducing technologies to enhance the fan experience and they will be accepting UST, which is Terra Stablecoin, as a payment method at all national uh, sports events this season, which I think starts in March. So again, more crazy adoption. It's mad. So let's do a little, little scorecard we put together. This is where we believe we are with the top high-profile athletes. Not all athletes, but the high-profile athletes that are getting paid in crypto that we know of. And this is going to explode more. We've got 10 in the NFL, 5 in the NBA, probably a lot more than that, two UFC, one MLB, NHL, soccer, two. But again, these are just the high profile, the heavyweight people that probably scores more, and it's only going to explode. In fact, even Pete McCormick is talking about maybe paying some of his soccer players with Bitcoin in Bedford in the United Kingdom. So if anybody's up there from the UK, I don't know if you're close to Bedford, but drop a comment if you are, and if you know Pete. So let's talk about the Super Bowl. So this is a, a game on Sunday between the Cincinnati Bengals and the LA Rams. And everybody is in on this. This is kind of called the Crypto Bowl. And I remember more than 22 years ago, there was a thing called the Dot Com Bowl, where all the shoddy dot com companies that had no chance of ever surviving were launching and paid for huge amounts. But now it's crypto. So the crypto industry is going all in on the NFL and the Super Bowl. They're buying up all the ad space, all the names that you know. You'll see some of them here. You've got FTX, Crypto.com, BitBuy, eToro, Coinbase. And you even have old school brands like Bud Light working with a DAO for their NFT. So Bud Light is getting in on the NFT game as well. So we'll see. And there's going to be a lot of good, good giveaways too. Uh, FTX, Sam Bankman Free is probably giving away nine or eight Bitcoin at least. So make sure you figure out how to do that and try to get a piece as we go forward. Now, as I mentioned, is it the dot-com bust again? This is now the crypto bull. Will it be a reflection of the old dot-com bull? The answer is no, because these people that are funding this are exchanges that are minting a lot of money. Um, in fact, Sam Bankman-Fried was testifying today in front of Congress, and he reminded Congress that 95% of all of their revenue in action happens outside the US. So US is lagging behind, but crypto is still so early and about to go really, really widely adopted. And this will not be like the pets.com liquidation or the silly ads from 22 years ago. It's hard to believe it's 22 years already. So let's talk about the Olympics real quick and how things are going with crypto versus CBDCs. You know we're not a fan of central bank digital currencies. So the digital one is not liked or trusted at the Olympics. The China Winter Olympics have been a bit of a failure for a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, obviously, they had to shut it down because of C-19. And their plan was to bring a whole bunch of fanfare to their central bank control currency. I use that control currency 
because that's what it is. Um, but due to you know no spectators being there and complete lack of trust, and even people like the American athletes were warned, do not use that wallet because you don't want people tracking you, especially not the Chinese government. So the launch has been stymied, a totally lackluster rollout, unfortunately, for those over there who were pinning a lot of hope to it, but nobody wants a CBDC. And I think that in itself will also drive more crypto adoption. The more authoritarian control there is over a central bank digital currency, the more people will flock to being self-sovereign. There could be no better advertisement. So that's China. But there's more. Uh, Athletes are very willing to accept crypto, not only big sports athletes like soccer players and American football players. But this guy, um, his name name is Nathan Chen. He shattered records at the Beijing Olympics, and he is accepting donations in Bitcoin, Ether, Dogecoin, stablecoins like USDC, etc. He's very happy to give me your crypto. So again, a lot of people have fans, and these fans get supported or give support to their superstar, their sports star, by paying them in crypto, which is great. Now, it's not all fun and games at the Chinese Olympics. Uh, Despite extreme measures and lockdowns and isolations and everything else, uh, C-19, unfortunately, it's like once it's out, you can't stop it. And the quicker the world realizes that, the better. (laughs) But the Reuters reported from January 23rd to Feb 7th, 400 cases of C-19, despite the most incredibly airtight bubble you can imagine, 400. And sadly, and this is a shout out to the athletes out there, although they can't watch YouTube in China, but maybe they can hook up a VPN or something. But sadly, there are hundreds of athletes now who are imprisoned in isolation rooms with crap food and no ability to work out. Imagine being an athlete. You spend years getting ready for this event, and then you're locked in a room. You can't work out, and you got to eat garbage. I mean, it must be just the worst experience ever. So our hearts go out to those athletes that are imprisoned over there. Now let's talk about the sports math real quickly because this wouldn't be an Invest Answers video without some numbers. So first of all, the real target for a lot of this advertising as well, according to people behind the scenes, Sam Bankman-Fried, obviously he's giving a lot of money away during the Super Bowl, but his big mission is the real target is not bringing on net new customers, but to help bring about the mainstreamification of crypto and Bitcoin and portray a healthy image for regulators for the industry. That's apparently the situation behind the scene. Um, And he is very optimistic that, again, FTX is going to be able to grow their US business. Remember, 95% of their business is outside the US. And a lot of that is derivatives business too, which is fun. But uh, hopefully they will be able to rebrand Crypto industry is not the Wild West to some of the regulators that are a little bit stuck back in time. Now, let's talk about some of the stadiums as well that builds more brand recognition, more adoption. So there's a couple of stadiums here. Um, One is the LA Lakers Stadium. used to be called the Staples Center. And it's famous because of the LA Lakers basketball team. And that was just recently renamed to Crypto.com Arena at a cost of $700 million for 25 years. It's 35 million bucks a year just to stick your name on the building. And of course, FTX Arena have a a place in Miami as well. Not as expensive, but still a lot of dollars over another 19-year deal. Um, If That's where the Miami Heat play. So you can see that crypto and basketball seems to be very, very tight so far, not just for NFTs. Now let's look at some of the other money that is paid for global sports sponsorship. It's going to hit about a $90 billion market by the year 2027. Currently today, it's about $66 billion, and that is large. And a huge part of this money is now coming from the crypto industry, just to show you how big the crypto industry is. And it's hugely successful. But this is how you reach people. There are people that spend a lot of time watching sports, watching football, ice skating, whatever it is all over the world. Now let's look at the likelihood of people watching the Super Bowl at this weekend on Sunday. And this is from Statista. Basically, 67% of all U.S. adults, just U.S., will probably watch the Super Bowl. 47% 47% will, for sure. Now, let's dig into what that means. And that doesn't include all the other people. So Super Bowl viewership varies between 100 million and 110 million. 
depending on how many international people jump on and the time zone and everything else. But that is a large addressable market. So let's talk about some CPM numbers. CPM is a marketing term for cost per thousand and how much it costs to address. So if you want to buy a Super Bowl ad, it'll cost you $7 million for 30 seconds. $7 million for 30 seconds. Your audience will be about 100 million people. So the cost to reach a thousand people is $70, which to some might sound expensive, others maybe not. But remember, this whole thing is not just about that 30 seconds, but it's about what happens later around how you swarm your marketing with social media, people talking about the water cooler, again, brand recognition, the ability to remember cognitively exactly what the ad was about, and then think, ooh, I might sign up for FTX and throw 500 bucks at Bitcoin. Why not? And that's what this video is about. So let's look at what we believe the conservative impact to be on Bitcoin price for the Super Bowl today. So some simple numbers. I've got two ranges here. One is the conversion rate low end and conversion rate high end. So the low end, the conversion rate would be 0.05% of all audience members converting, which would be 50,000 people who will go and buy 500 bucks worth of Bitcoin. That new money flow into Bitcoin would be about $25 million. And that would be the impact because of our multiple of 21 times. We've covered it already before what that means. And the impact on Bitcoin price is $38. Now on the high end, the conversion rate high end is 2% conversion. That means of the 100 million people, the Sam Bankman Freed audience, Super Bowl audience, whatever you want to call it, 2 million people, they put 500 bucks in and the money flow impact would be $1 billion, which will have an impact on price of about $1,500 on Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. Bitcoin's had a very, very good day, up another 500 bucks in the last 24 hours. So we'll see. And Ethereum is on fire, like we predicted yesterday. All the on-chain data was pointing to that. So that is where we are, everybody. Sorry for being so long-winded, but the impact, again, I can't stress enough, of having adoption, sports and everything else will drive the price up we are still so early in the game everybody big thank you for being here thank you to the moderators hope you like it and subscribe if you haven't already so i'll see you all tomorrow take care bye